friends welcome to happy learning for the course on heat transfer so for the heat generation unit we will start today in the session with the numericals which are based on the derivations that we have seen in the previous session so if you have missed the derivation you can just see my previous video to get the clear understanding of the derivations so the understanding of the derivation is very much important for the numericals to solve so let's start with the numerical so we'll just read again as a statement and then we will move forward so what is given in the statement in the statement it is given as a plain metal wall of 12 meter thickness generates heat at the rate of 5 into 10 raised to 5 watt per meter cube when an electric current is passed through it so the thickness of the plate it is given as the metal plate it is given as 12 cm and it generates the heat at 5 into 10 raised to 5 watt per meter cube when a current is passed through it if the surface temperature on the left and the right sides are to be maintained at 200 degrees and 150 degrees centigrade means the left face temperature it is given and the right face temperature it is given also the k value is given so t1 it is given as 200 and the right side the temperature is given as 150 so what you are supposed to find out you are supposed to find out the three things the temperature distribution across the plate second position and magnitude of the maximum temperature and last you are supposed to find out the heat flow rate at each surface of the plate so heat flow rate on this left face and heat flow rate on the right face so let's start with the numerical so this is the given right we have written it from the numerical so what are the steps that you are supposed to take while solving the numerical the steps are same first of all we will see the write the poisson's distribution equation then we will do the integrations double integrations right then we will find the value of c1 and c2 by applying the boundary conditions so as i have told you previously that you can directly keep it in mind the formula or the best way is by by writing the poisson's equation and then integrating it twice so i prefer this method by integrating the poisson's equation twice and then going for the numerical it is a lengthy process but it is it will give you the correct answer so right so this is the poisson's equation what is our first task you are supposed to find out the temperature distribution that is nothing but the p equation so this is the poisson's equation all of you are aware of this d square t by dx square plus g upon k that is equal to 0 so name this as equation number 1 integrating the equation number 1 twice so you will get one equation that is equation number 2 that is dt by dx that is equal to g upon k x plus c1 again integrating it you will get the equation number 3 that is t is equal to minus g upon 2k x square plus c1 x plus c2 so these are the same steps which you will have to follow each time and name the equation as 1 2 and 3 so the next step after the boundary uh, after writing the um, poisson's equation and integrating is what we will apply the boundary conditions why we will apply the boundary condition because our next task is to find out the value of this c1 and this c2 so at x is equal to 0 means this what is the temperature of the left face the temperature it is nothing but t1 so what i will do i will substitute x is equal to 0 in this equation equation number 3 so instead of t i will write down t1 that is equal to x is 0 so this term it gets equal to 0 this term it gets equal to 0 so what is left with it c2 that is equal to t1 so this is our first value of c2 right now next we will apply the boundary condition at this side so at x is equal to l so means this right face what is the value of temperature t is equal to t2 so i will substitute this in equation number 3 that is t is equal to t2 that is equal to instead of x square i will write l square that is g upon 2k into l square plus c1 into l c1 into l plus c2 that is the value of c2 the value of c2 we have already found it as t1 
So after necessary arrangement, you will get the value of C1. So our second task is fulfilled to find the value of C1 and C2. Now we will substitute the value of C1 and C2 in this equation number 3. Right? Here it is written substituting in equation number 3. So after substituting you will get this equation. Right? Now we will put the value. We know the value of G. We know the value of T2. We know the value of T1. And we know the thickness that is N. Right? And we again know the value of T1. So what is the unknown parameter over here? The unknown parameter is x. So g it is given. All the values are given which I have ticked all are given. So after putting t is equal to minus g what is g? 5 into 10 raised to 5 divided by 2 into k. The k value it is given over here it is as 50. It is given in the numerical. Multiplied by x square plus in bracket what is t2? that is 150 minus t1 that is nothing but 200 divided by l that is nothing but 0 0.12 meter plus g that is 5 into 10 raised to 5 divided by 2 into k that is 50 okay into l and x and what is the value of plus t1 plus t1 it is nothing but 200 so after solving you will get a equation which i have highlighted in a rectangular box and named it as equation number 6 so t is equal to minus 500 sorry 5000 x square plus 183.33 x plus 200. So this is our equation. So this is the equation number 1 sorry equation number 6 which is nothing but the temperature distribution across the plate. So we have found out our first bit that is nothing but the temperature distribution across the plate. Right. So these are the same steps. We have to follow every time whenever it is asked the temperature distribution. Now next what is you are supposed to find out position and magnitude of maximum temperature. So you are supposed to find out the maximum temperature and what is the position right means position means where it will occur whether it will occur over here or here or here we don't know. So we will find the position right. So Second bit, position and magnitude of maximum temperature. We know that the maximum temperature we denote it by T max. And when is the temperature maximum? At that point, what is the condition? Dt by dx that is equal to 0. So what we will do? Differentiate equation number 6 with respect to x and equate it to 0. So this is the equation number 6. What we will do? We will differentiate it with respect to x and equate it to 0. Why? Because dt by dx that is equal to 0 when t is equal to t max. So we will write down differentiate we will get this equation. So after doing the calculation you get the value of x. So this is the distance that is 0 0.018 meter the maximum temperature it will occur. So this is the position. Now our next task is magnitude means you will have to find out the value of T max. So how will you find out T max? By substituting the value of x in this equation number 6. x is now known to you. So T will become T max. So if you put the value, you will get the value of T max. Very simple to understand. So in this way, we have completed the bit number 2 that is nothing but the position and the maximum temperature. So the maximum temperature that is 201.68 degree centigrade, it will occur at 0 0.018 meter. So now the last bit, you are supposed to find out what? You are supposed to find out the heat flow rate at this phase and the heat flow rate on the right phase. This is the left phase and this is the right phase. Right? Again very easy for us to solve. So what here we will do? Let's see. <coughs> So, for the, what is the formula for the heat flow? Q is equal to minus Ka dt by dx. So, this is the basic formula. So, you are supposed to find out the heat flow rate at x is equal to 0 basically and the heat flow rate at x is equal to L. This you are supposed to find out. So, now for that you will require dt by dx at x is equal to 0. 
will require dt by dx at x is equal to 0 and dt by dx at x is equal to l. But we have not found it. So how we will found out? Let's see. Very easy. So dt. Now what we will do? We will differentiate this equation number 5. Sorry. this equation number 5 we will differentiate it so if we differentiate it we will get dt by dx that is equal to minus g upon 2k into 2x so this 2 and 2 it gets cancelled in bracket k2 minus t1 divided by l plus g upon l into 2k and this t1 term it will be 0 so here we get this equation right after differentiating the equation number 5 so here we will put the values you know the value of g right you know the value of k you know the value of t1 sorry t2 you know the value of t1 so in this way you will get a equation in terms of x for dt by dx right so our next step is now what we will put or we will find the value of dt by dx at x is equal to 0 and dt by dx at x is equal to l. So heat flow on the left face. So the formula is q is equal to minus ka dt by dx at x is equal to 0. So you know a. We will assume it that the heat we will find out per meter square. Or you can assume it as 1. So area is 1. Now dt by dx at x is equal to 0 means you will put the value of x is equal to 0 in this equation number a. So this term it will be 0. So you will get 183.33. So after doing the calculation you get q as minus 9166.7. So here we get the value of q as negative. So what does this negative sign shows from the sign convention that the heat flow it is in the opposite direction. That is the heat leaves from the left face. Right? Next, we are supposed to find out the heat flow rate at the right surface or the right face. So Q2 or we will assume at Q only. So at x is equal to L. So what is the formula? Q is equal to minus Ka dt by dx at x is equal to L. So you know the value of K. A is equal to 1. So dt by dx x is equal to L that is that is you will put x is equal to 0 0.12 in this equation number 8 and you will get the value of Q. Right. So this is Q. So in this way we have found out the heat flow rate from the right surface or the right face. So I hope you have understood with the numerical very easy. Thank you. Keep watching. Happy learning. Do like and subscribe my channel. Bye.